For some reason, I love fishing in video games. So many games have it, and many of them completely suck me in and keep me coming back to the sometimes non-essential mechanic time and time again. Some games make the act of fishing fun, some give it that collectible feeling, and some use the fish in interesting ways within the game. I thought it would be fun to do something a little different on the channel, so I whipped up a top 10 for you all. I mainly just wanted to talk about fishing, and this was my vehicle of choice. Without further ado, here are my top 10 favorite ways games have included fishing. Honorable Mention Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is an open-world adventure game that includes so many different gameplay elements, of course fishing would be one of them. Well, not really, actually. There's a reason it's an honorable mention, you unfortunately don't get a real fishing pole to fish, the only way to catch them is to swim in the water and press the A button when you're close. The reason I'm willing to include it here as an honorable mention is how you're able to use them in the game. You get to throw your catches into a pot yourself to cook them up to heal and provide specific buffs for Link. I would have really liked if Breath of the Wild had a fishing pole or a collectible screen for the fish, but being able to stand on an ice block and whistle to round them up on the shore almost makes up for it. Number 10. Resident Evil 4, if you haven't heard of it, is a fishing video game that has some shooting elements to it. It's kind of nuts how much work was put in to have such an extensive third-person shooting side quest. For the main part of the game, you get to drive a boat searching for fish to harpoon. Being able to control a boat while fishing isn't used nearly as often as it really should in video games. There's a legendary fish that requires a minigame to catch. In terms of size, no other game has anything on this guy. This is also the only game where the fish can kill you. Okay, we're starting off with a bit of a joke, but you gotta admit, being able to knife and shoot the fish in the water and ponds to get healing items is a pretty neat addition. They take up an enormous amount of space in your case, especially with how early on the fish are, but it's a trade-off worth having since fishing is just that dang fun. Number 9 Jack and Daxter is a 3D platformer collectathon made by Naughty Dog. You work to get the main collectible, Power Cells, by doing various tasks, one of them is to help a fisherman catch 200 pounds of fish. Regular fish are 1 pound, golden fish are 5 pounds, and eels are an instant failure. If you miss 20 fish, you fail as well. Even though it's an isolated task, there's something satisfying about using the net to go back and forth catching the right fish. It feels very smooth. It almost makes me wish the game had a few more of these types of quests. Number 8 a Short Hike is a lovable, charming, wholesome indie game that came out in 2019. If you haven't heard of this game before, I would highly recommend looking into it. You get to explore freely on your own around this hiking trail island. There are plenty of cool moments and fun things to find when exploring. It doesn't overstay its welcome, you can finish it within about an hour. On the island you can find someone that gives you a fishing pole, and fishing is as easy as throwing out your line and pressing the button at the right time while pulling back on your pole. You can bring your catches to the duck on the ship. Once you bring him three different fish, you get a fish journal. He gives you money in exchange for fish, or if he's already received that fish before, he'll give you some bait. Bait helps you get rare versions of fish like tiny, albino, and big. There are some small details I really liked about fishing. If you cast your line and wait, your character will sit down. When you struggle pulling the fish, her eyes will squint. When you relax, her eyes go back to normal. And once you catch the fish, she falls backwards. Whether you want to finish your fishing journal or just have a relaxing time on the island, a short hike has you covered for your simple fishing needs. Number 7 Battle Chasers Night War is a turn-based RPG that can take around 50 hours or so to complete. It has a great art style, dungeon crawling exploration, interesting deterrence to discourage grinding for levels, and some solid power-ups and bosses. It also includes fishing, surprisingly. You find fishing spots in every dungeon, as well as some areas in the world. Fishing usually gets you meat that can be traded for shadow coins, which can be spent for unique rewards. The rewards could be better fishing equipment or some unique weapons. The fishing itself is pretty fun. You wait for a bite and pull in the opposite direction the fish is swimming. Not a whole lot to it, but something about it just feels right. There are plenty of types of fish to catch, some being rare and hard to get. I am also a huge fan of the diorama style cube you're in when you fish. I spent more time fishing in Battle Chasers than I ever would have thought, but like I said, it has a pretty good fishing minigame. Number 6 Animal Crossing, you knew this one would show up at some point. 
The fishing is pretty similar throughout all the Animal Crossing games, so I'll use the newest entry as an example. The main appeal of fishing in Animal Crossing is that collectible itch that it scratches. You can bring new catches to the museum in town, attempting to finish the exhibit by donating every type of fish. You can also display them in your home or outdoors, or sell them to make money. Certain fish will only show up in certain spots like waterfalls, beaches, rivers, or ponds. There's also exclusive fish depending on the season and time of day. You fish by equipping your rod, casting a line out, and watching the bobber. The fish might nibble first, once the bobber goes under, that's when you rapidly press A to catch it. A nice touch is if you run too close to the water, the fish will swim away. The reason it isn't higher on the list is it's not a very interactive experience, you just plop it out there and catch it. It's simple, but if that's what you're looking for, it's great. Number 5 Twilight Princess has some really cool ways fishing was integrated into the game. First, you have your bobber fishing pole, which you can use to fish anywhere you see water to catch fish, sometimes needing it to do the main quest like with the reek fish. Secondly, you have the fishing hole to fish with lures. Besides the joke of Resident Evil 4, this is the only one on the list where you can maneuver a boat while you fish. It's a relaxing experience, a good break from saving the world. You cast your line out, swim the lure back and forth, hook the fish, reel it in, if it jumps you need to lower your pole, and finally land it on the boat. You can bring a tour guide to go along with you, or you can go alone. There are a few types of fish you can catch in here, and your biggest one will be saved in the fish tank in the shack. Besides the fish, you can catch a bottle in the pond with your bobber fishing rod, and a heart piece while on the boat with the lure rod. You have some lures to pick from, the beginning three all have their strengths, there's a frog lure for completing the rollout game in the shack, and the infamous sinking lure. You can acquire that one by using your bobber fishing pole in a certain area in the pond after you catch enough of the fish. It's infamous for being illegal, and if you plop it on with the guide in the boat with you, she won't let you use it and even takes it from you. With the addition of the two types of fishing, the requirement to fish for the main quest, and the inclusion of the boat to aid fishing, Twilight Princess showed it wasn't just a carbon copy of a previous game in its franchise. Number 4 Terraria is a fantastic equipment progression sandbox mining game. It has a lot of bosses, enemies, and biomes. It also has fishing. The act of fishing itself isn't that interesting. You just cast out your line, you wait for a bite, and click to reel it back in. However, everything surrounding that easy task is what makes it great. First of all, there's an angler quest giver that sends you out to catch specific fish once per in-game day. The fish could be simple, rare, or even require you to go to a very specific biome to catch, like up in the clouds or in honey. He gives you rewards, and there are so many you can get. Some of them help you with fishing, and some are just fun to have, like the bunny mount. Secondly, you can use your catches to craft certain items in the game. Mostly food or potions, here's a list of that. Thirdly, you can get crates that house extra treasures. Instead of a fish, a crate will end up in your inventory. You click on it to open it, and it gives you a lot of cool resources, or maybe just a cool item. You can even drink certain potions to increase the likelihood of getting crates. And the last reason fishing is great in Terraria is what is called fishing power. Basically, that's the likelihood to get higher quality catches. There's so much that has a hand in determining fishing power and success in general. What quality of fishing pole you're using, the type of bait you're using, specific fishing-related equipped items, potions that give you a buff, and the best one of all, the size of the lake. Basically, the bigger the lake, the better your fishing power. There's more to it than that, but in short, think of it as bigger is better. What this means is the act of fishing might make you interact with other aspects of the game, like equipping fishing items, taking fishing buffs, and even mining a small pond so it connects to a different body of water to create a larger lake. The feeling of moving large bodies of water in a way that will help you rather than cause chaos, I gotta tell ya, not much beats it. Number 3 It might sound crazy to put Okami so high up on this list, but I really like the fishing in this game. You draw the celestial brush towards the fish itself in the water. Once you connect with the fish, you do a little minigame, pulling the control stick the opposite direction that that fish is going. Once it gets close enough, launch it in the air, and use your brush attack on it. Being able to not only draw the fishing line to the fish itself, work to get the fish close, but also attack it physically is a very satisfying feeling. Some fish take more than one hit, there are some storyline fish you need to catch, and plenty of optional areas to fish just for fun. 
This game also has a fishery to complete if you wanted to, which I of course wanted to. Great game, great fishing mechanic. Number 2 When I was younger, I never understood the joys of fishing, so I didn't spend as much time here as I really should have. As an adult, I can safely say Ocarina of Time has the best gameplay feel for fishing out of anything I've played. Pay 20 rupees to fish for as long as you like, cast your line, dance your lure, hook a fish, and reel it in. You can keep one fish on you as your trophy fish and send the rest back to the pond. In all of the games listed here, even the first place game, none of them have as satisfying of a sensation when you hook the fish. It feels like a battle has just begun. The music even switches to one that plays when enemies are nearby. You can visit the fishing hole as a child and as an adult. As a child, if you catch a fish 10 pounds or heavier, your reward is a heart piece. As an adult, if it's 13 pounds or more, you get the golden scale, which lets you dive underwater for a longer period of time. Both great incentives, I love when extrinsic reward meets intrinsic fun, and Ocarina of Time's fishing nails it. The pond has a few more tricks to it. If you run too fast or jump into the water, the fish will go to the deeper parts of the pond. Apparently, wearing your iron boots lets you go deeper into the pond, helping you catch a specific fish. And after you catch the record fish, you can now find the sinking lure somewhere in the pond. You can also use your fishing rod to remove the angler's hat. Poor guy. He is nice enough when you give it back though. Another awesome detail is how the dirt from the bottom of the pond rises up when you pull a fish in. This game came out in 1998, way before any other on this list. It's incredible to me how fleshed out and fun fishing was in this game and how it has barely been improved upon in over 20 years. Number 1 Stardew Valley is a farming simulator type game where you own your own farm, you can plant crops, go to the mines, ride a horse, tend to your animals, and best of all, fish. The fish can be sold, used to craft certain items, used to cook certain dishes, eaten raw to regain energy and health, or given to NPCs as a gift or as a fetch quest. Certain fish only appear in certain areas, time of day, and seasons, just like Animal Crossing, but there is also a legendary fish every season, and when you catch all of them, you can then catch the final legendary fish. The fishing gameplay itself is a highlight. Initially, it's pretty difficult as the bar mechanic isn't one that's seen in other games. You need to keep the fish within the green while it moves up and down the bar. Certain fish have a reliable path while others are sporadic. You can get treasure from fishing just like Terraria, this time by putting your green bar over the chest long enough. You do need to catch the fish, otherwise the treasure is forfeit. You can eventually add tackle and bait to your pole, and the act of fishing levels up your fishing stat, which increases the size of the green bar, making it easier. Like Animal Crossing, Stardew Valley has the completionist aspect to it, as well as using it for money, but like Terraria, you can use your fish to craft things, and like Breath of the Wild, you can use your fish to cook. With how it feeds into other parts of the game so well, Stardew Valley's fishing feels like a natural part of the experience, not just an extra side quest or minigame. So what do you think? Is my list garbage? What is your favorite video game that includes fishing? Let me know in the comments down below. You can like and subscribe to the channel. I usually make videos going more in depth, critiquing or reviewing one game at a time. But like I said, I thought this would be a fun change of pace and I really wanted to talk about fishing. I'm still working on the Luigi's Mansion 3 video, but I wasn't enjoying it as much as I had hoped, so I wanted to give myself a little break. Thanks for watching, see you next time.